If you have a Roku device of any kind, you have a ticket to free entertainment. As much as you want, really. And that's the whole point of cord cutting, right? You wanted to save some money. So today I'm gonna give you the top 10 free apps on Roku. Or at least my top 10 free apps on Roku. The ones that I think, if you have a Roku, you should have these ones downloaded. And if you have these apps, it's not that you'll never pay for anything ever again. Maybe you wanna grab Netflix for a while or Disney Plus or whatever. But the thing is, you won't have to. So now I will give you the gift of entertainment freedom. Let's dive in. Hey everybody, Craig here from reviews.org. Hopefully this video is helpful to you. I mean, hopefully it's also entertaining in some way. If so, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back for more stuff just like this. All right, let's get into it. The top 10 free apps. Now on my Roku, on the left side, you're gonna see there's a bunch of menu options and then the uh, apps are all over on the right. Now, if we go down here, there is something called featured free. I do want to talk about this, but I'm going to save it. This is something that Roku does that uh, your others don't, your Fire TV, your Chromecast, whatever. Uh, you know, Roku organizes things a little bit differently. Uh, and I was tempted to count this as an app, but it's not quite, okay? So we're gonna go back to our homepage and actually talk about the top 10 free apps. And then I'll come back to that and how you can use it to find more apps and more content to watch than even what I'm giving to you today here on this video. All right, so let's pop over. We're gonna go past all of the paid stuff, past the Netflix and the Hulus and the Prime videos and start with YouTube. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on YouTube, but yeah, it's kind of important, says the guy you're watching on YouTube right now, right? Now on this device, I haven't signed in. You can sign in or not. It's usually helpful if you have a Gmail account to sign in so you can kind of keep track of your history and all that stuff, but I'll skip that for now. Uh, I'll just bring up YouTube as kind of the perfect catch-all when it comes to on-demand, live, user-generated, premium content, YouTube has it all. So you come over here on the Roku app, over on the left side, this is where you're gonna do a lot of that navigation toward the type of stuff that you want to see, uh, whether you're subscribed to things or you prefer checking out some music, uh, maybe you want to rent some movies and TV to watch. They have that capability on YouTube these days. One of my favorite things to do on YouTube is actually to come down here to more and go over to news. This is an excellent news app uh, with a lot of live feeds and a lot of clips, uh, you know, whether from recently or from further back uh, so that you can kind of keep up with your news. Yeah, right here on YouTube. It's great. All right, let's go back to the home page. And after YouTube, okay, here come five apps that are, all, I'm gonna lump these all together. The Roku channel, Pluto, Tubi, Filmrise, and Freebie. I will tell you more about them individually, but as a group, if you have these five entertainment apps, basically what that means is, again, you'll never have to pay for anything again. They're all commercial supported. Most of them do on-demand and live stuff. And between the five of them, you'll never run out of things to watch. Ever. But let's start at the top of the list here with the Roku channel. When Roku debuted the Roku channel a few years ago, it was pretty good. It's gotten a lot better since then though. It's a really great app, whether you're looking for live TV, you know, you prefer things on that uh, kind of timetable grid. Uh, they've, they've got a lot of that. Obviously this isn't gonna be the uh, same cable channels that you are watching, uh, but it will be kind of offshoots of a lot of those things. And then outside of live TV, they have a lot of on-demand stuff as well. Uh, Roku has even gotten into the Roku Originals game. Okay, so this is something that some apps do. Not everybody is able to do it, uh, but Roku is producing or at least licensing their own originals. So for instance, if you remember the stories about Quibi from a few years ago, Quibi was a streaming service that was pretty ill-conceived and it uh, kind of evaporated after about six months, but some of the content was pretty good. Roku bought that. So on the Roku channel, you just uh, press left or the back button and it will open the, up this uh, left side menu. Come down here to Roku Originals and there's some pretty good stuff on here. Swimming with the Sharks was good. The Newsreader is a program that they licensed out of Australia that was pretty darn good. And of course, there's the uh, Weird Al biopic. It's, uh, you know, obviously a comedic non-bio biopic, uh, but it is hilarious. And that is a Roku produced original. Really good stuff. All right, outside of Roku, let's talk about Pluto TV. Pluto TV is the original 
cable imitator. Okay, so Pluto TV started as a live, a free live TV streaming service. Again, the channels that they have uh, are not the same as you're gonna get on your cable subscription, but kind of offshoots of some of those. So I'll show you what I mean. If I click on guide here, it'll open up my guide and I'm gonna go over here immediately to the left hand side because they've got 200, 300 channels, it's a lot of channels and you know, it's a lot to kind of wade through. So I'm gonna come in here and look for what category of thing I want to watch. And this is where Pluto is really brilliant is with these categories. So do I wanna watch a movie? Do I wanna watch, you know, a holiday show? Cause as I'm recording this, it's the holiday season. Do I wanna watch news, crime, reality, whatever. You can see they've got all these different uh, categories. So they sort things really well uh, so that you can find what you wanna watch easily. Now, Pluto TV, like I said, started as this kind of live TV streaming service, but it didn't stop there. They have since added an on-demand service. So again, I go over here to the left, further over to the left, and uh, click on on-demand, and it's gonna bring up the Pluto TV on-demand library. This is gonna be a lot of the stuff that is on that live TV grid, uh, but now you can watch it whenever you want. So, you know, people have their differing styles of how they want to consume their entertainment. If you prefer the on-demand, you know, I wanna watch it on my schedule, then this is here for you. And again, we have the same kind of categories over here on the left to find the things that you wanna watch. And I hope it's clear as I'm quickly scrolling through here that uh, Pluto TV has a really great library. Uh, all of these are gonna be commercial supported, so if you wanna watch John Wick, yeah, you're gonna have to watch commercials while you do it, but for some people, that's fine. Others, you know, they'd rather pay for it, but hey, we're here for the free stuff, and that means, yeah, we're gonna watch commercials. But if you scroll through it, you'll see that, uh, yeah, they have a lot of titles that are actually things that you're gonna wanna watch, which is similar to our next app. Okay, let's go from Pluto over to Tubi. Tubi is the original free streaming service that started as sort of a Netflix with commercials competitor. And when you log in, yeah, it kind of looks a lot like Netflix as far as having the different categories uh, and the titles arranged the way that they are. Yeah, it doesn't look exactly the same, but I'm just saying it, you know, kind of feels reminiscent of that. And again, similar to Pluto TV, uh, Tubi does a great job of pulling in titles that you're actually gonna want to watch. You know, it's, this isn't bottom of the barrel stuff. Uh, this is really good stuff. And with Tubi, I often pair this one with Pluto TV because they, they feel like opposites to me. Pluto started as a live TV streaming service and uh, added on on-demand stuff later. Tubi went the exact opposite way. And so this one started as an on-demand streaming service, meaning you can watch it whenever you want, uh, and eventually added on Voila, live TV. So kind of a similar vibe. You're not gonna get all the same channels from one service to the other. Uh, when it comes to live TV, I think Pluto is the better option. Um, but that's not to say that the options that you get here on Tubi are not good. They may not be quite up to the Pluto TV standard, but yeah, there's still a lot of really, really great stuff here on the live TV uh, side of things. Now. For my money, I think Tubi probably wins most of the time on their on-demand library over Pluto, but that's why they work so great together, uh, is that they, they kind of feed off of each other and which style of TV you want that day. Now we're rounding out those five entertainment apps that I told you about uh, with these two, FilmRise and Freebie. Let's do FilmRise first. FilmRise, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, uh, but I will say that like the others, it has a fairly strong library. Uh, you know, this one may not be quite as uh, A-list <laughs> as the libraries that you get on Pluto and Tubi, but it's pretty darn good. And the thing that FilmRise does better than any other free app that I know of is categorization. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I scroll down here, you'll see popular categories, Western, true crime, and so on and so on and so on. They do a really great job of separating their library into these categories uh, in a way that makes it easy for you to peruse. In fact, FilmRise is so dedicated <laughs> to uh, sorting their content in this way that you can actually get several different FilmRise apps. So what I mean is, this is FilmRise, just kind of generic FilmRise, but if what you really want is Westerns, or you're really into action movies, 
Well, then you can go into the Roku uh, channel library and get the FilmRise Action channel. Uh, they separate these all into various apps so that if that's all that you're really interested in, you don't have to worry about the other stuff kind of cluttering up your feed. Uh, you can really zero in, focus in. But you can do that within this app as well. Okay, so if I really want just action stuff, then yeah, I pull this down and there it is, Film Rise Action, and there we go. Because honestly, who doesn't want to watch Danny Trejo as a zombie hunter? Let's be honest. And last up in that group is Freebie. I, again, won't spend a ton of time on Freebie. I'll just say that this one is an Amazon-owned app, and you can think of this as Prime Video, but with commercials. And it has an excellent uh, content library. One thing you're not gonna find in Freebie is that live TV section that all those others have had. Uh, Freebie does not bother with that. This is all on-demand content. So that might actually be a plus for you if you don't actually wanna worry about live TV style streaming. All right, let's round out our top 10 with a few more. Let's talk about Plex. Plex is a unique option out there and one that I really love. If you use Plex, what you're doing is setting up something that will allow you to watch your own media on your streaming device. And here's what I mean by that. If you sign up for Plex, you go online, go to their website, sign up, create an account, it will allow you to upload your own content to the cloud where you can then stream it on your streaming device if you're logged in to the same account. So if you have a whole bunch of DVDs, if you have family photos, if you have a music library uh, that you've cherished since the 90s and you'd love to have that on a streaming service, well, this allows you to do that. This is kind of your own streaming service. So you can see on here, you know, if I go down to here to movies, I've uploaded a few things. My copy of The Last Starfighter or uh, the 1984 Dune, I had those on Blu-ray and I wanted to upload those to the cloud, so I did. Pretty awesome capability, honestly. And I can do the same thing with my music. Uh, if, you know, for instance, this is a great example. Here's an album that I bought when I lived in France for a while, uh, but it's not available on Spotify. Ah, oh, it drives me crazy. But now that I have it on Plex, I'm able to stream that anytime I want. And of course, like I mentioned, I can do this with my own photos as well, okay? Now, Plex also has a live TV service and they have on-demand movies and shows. Uh, they even have music on title, like it says down here. Now, I'm not gonna spend much time talking about this because Plex's library of titles is weaker than what you would find on those other five that I talked about. Uh, that's not to say it's terrible, there are definitely some decent titles on here, but on average, yeah, it's not up to the caliber of what we'd expect from those other ones. Uh, but it's there, uh, it does exist, I wanted to bring it up, but it's definitely not the selling point of Plex. Plex is all about creating your own streaming service, not counting on them for theirs. Does that make sense? Heading back to the homepage, let's talk about Spotify. Yeah, I was disappointed that there was an album that's not available <laughs> on Spotify, so I had to use Plex. But for the most part, I, when I'm streaming music, I'm doing that through Spotify. Maybe you use another service, uh, you can sub that in for this one. There's a good chance that there's a streaming app for whatever service you use. Uh, but with Spotify, uh, yeah, it's great to be able to stream my music on my TV when that is appropriate. Peacock is a great option, but it is a slightly tricky one, okay? If we come into Peacock, the trick here is that Peacock is a, a premium streaming service, uh, but it's also a free one, okay? Now, why is that tricky? Well, it's tricky because it has three different tiers of service, uh, and you have to choose which one you want. Do you want to go for the free service and watch some commercials and only have access to half the library, or do you want to pay some money? Uh, you know, get access to the whole library and maybe, maybe not watch commercials as well. We're not worrying about the paid options, we're just talking about the free options right now. But the reason Peacock does kind of drive me a little bit crazy sometimes is that, yeah, if you're on the free version, you're not getting access to their entire library. I think it's about, what, 60% of their library, something like that, don't quote me on the number, but it's something like that. Uh, so there is quite a lot that you're missing out on and you'll be constantly encouraged to go ahead and sign up for premium. That being said, there is one thing that Peacock does that I absolutely love. If I come over here to movies, let's select a random movie, doesn't matter what it is, we're not gonna watch it because I don't want the copyright strike, uh, but let's go over here to nope, okay? So I'm gonna watch now 
And this is something that I love. Peacock will, when you start a movie, sometimes, not always, but oftentimes you'll see this. Watch the following messages, then enjoy your movie ad free. And you could see there was about two and a half minutes of ads. And through the magic of editing, I'm already halfway through that. We're almost done. And then I get to enjoy the movie ad free. So that's pretty great, honestly. The other thing that has to be called out anytime you talk about Peacock is WWE content. Okay, so this is exclusive to NBC Universal, and that's their uh, streaming service. And so if you're into wrestling, you've got to have Peacock. And they do have a lot of great free wrestling content on here. Lastly, something for the kids, okay? Let's talk about the Lego channel. Now, I could call out a few other kid-friendly apps out there, like PBS Kids, maybe. And my kids really like that one. But let's talk about the Lego channel instead. Because this was quite the find for me, and it has become a real hit at our house over the last year or two. Uh, so with the Lego channel, it's exactly that. It is a channel full of Lego content. Now, hang on a minute, you might be saying, how much Lego content could there really be? A lot. There's a lot. If I look here on the screen, you can see it's kind of sorted into categories right at the beginning. What do you want to watch today? You know, right when you log in. Well, you can scroll all the way over and skip this screen. And then uh, it kind of gives you that Netflix style tile layout with all of their stuff. So there's going to be the animated series that Lego puts out. Uh, there's going to be people talking about Legos, people building Legos or Lego, whatever the plural is. I don't know. I don't care. What I do care about is that my kids have a lot of really great, safe content for them to watch. Uh, when it comes to Lego, I mean, this entire thing is a commercial, right? The whole app is a commercial. So there is that to consider, but uh, you know, hey, at least they've got something fun to watch. All right, so there you go, 10 free apps. Hopefully there's something in there uh, that you can add to your library so that you can have as much free content as your heart could possibly desire. But I do also want to point out over here on the left-hand menu here on Roku, if you come down here, there is a featured free section. So if I come in here, it's going to pull together a bunch of the content from a lot of those apps that we've already talked about. Now, obviously, because this is a Roku device, they're going to lean heavily on Roku content, but it's not just the Roku channel content uh, that you're gonna have on here. For instance, I go right down here, Holiday Classics by Fossum. That's another app that we haven't talked about. And if you come down and scroll through some of the titles that they have available, you'll see right up above that, that title, it'll show the app that you would be watching that on. So this is just kind of a sorting house for a bunch of different titles uh, that you can watch across multiple apps, some of which we talked about today, some of which we didn't. But without a doubt, my absolute favorite thing is that if we come down here to Adrenaline Rush and scroll over just a little bit, we have Murder, She Wrote on the Adrenaline Rush category. <laughs> so, okay, maybe the categories aren't perfect, but there's a bunch of content on here for you to check out. All right, but the last thing I want to point out is if we come back here to the homepage um, and come down here to Streaming Channels, uh, then I do want to point out that you can come down here and look for free movies and TV, okay? So if you're looking for more apps along the lines of stuff that we talked about today, then come down here to the free section in the channel store and you'll find a bunch of options. Not everything is on here, this is their top list, uh, but it is a great place to start. So there you have it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, any comments, any apps you feel like I missed out on mentioning. Uh, go ahead and throw them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe if this video was helpful to you. Good luck with your Roku and your journey toward the cheapest possible content, including a lot of free stuff. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.